You alright guys? I'm still getting dressed here. Hey up me ducks. Combanoir, guten Abend, bonsoir, good evening all. You all getting snuggled in? <laughs> yeah, trouble getting a parking space. It is a strange thing when I I can see you know, I know you're not all chatting and I love you all, whether you're online chatting or not. But the chatters, I can see them arriving one by one, little by little. And it's very similar to uh, being backstage and just peeking through the curtains and seeing people come in. Or quite often I'm doing a last minute bit of practice in the back of the car on the flute or the soprano sax or something. I'm hidden away as far as I can in the corner of the car park. and Because uh, we're such an insecure lot, us musicians, you know. So we always assume nobody's going to come. And every time you see a car come in, your, your little heart goes, ooh, somebody, there is actually somebody coming. And that's what it's like when I see you come online. <laughs> Great stuff. Ah, Happy days, happy evenings. So I can see a lot of you feeling mellow and relaxed already. And if you're not, you soon will be. <laughs> Another world premiere tonight. Susie Ledge is joining me later. And uh, when I have a new guest, a special guest like Susie tonight, I kind of like to slot them in quite early. So if they've got their special fans and people and friends and family watching, they don't have to hang around too much listening to me drivel on. But we were rehearsing this song and... It's just such a perfect closer. It is a perfect end of show. So uh, me and Susie are going to do that at the end. So if you're waiting for that, you can go and have a cup of coffee and come back at half seven if you get irritated by listening to me. Well, hopefully you won't. Just stick with it. But we'll get Susie on in be half an hour or so. And uh, I was thinking, what should I do today? And I'm going to uh, just improvise something on the shakuhachi. I don't know what I'm going to play.
Uh, the good old Shaco, actually. What should we call that? I don't know. An evening mellow mood. I'm really rubbish at titles. One of the titles on um, the latest CD, the Time Stand Still album, which I know a lot of you've got. Um, I was doing. I love playing in primary schools to the little ones. I was. Uh, I think it's called Wheatcroft. Was it? I don't know. It was in Scarborough anyway. That'd be primary school in Scarborough. And that, the, the piece at the time that I'm talking about was um, it was work in progress. So I played it and I said, "What does this make you think about?" You know, I need a title. Can just write something down. And uh, somebody wrote down "The Return of the Eagle." E G L E, and that's what it became. I keep meaning to send a, a CD to that school because they must be—they'll be back now, won't they? Most of them. Note to self. Blah, 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 blah. Right, I'll do that. So, since last weekend, we lost Ennio Morricone, didn't we? What a what a guy! What an unbelievable composer. Um, great talent, so great at creating an atmosphere, wasn't he? And a mood set in a scene. I think of the mission and the good, the bad, and the ugly. Gabriel's oboe, Cinema Paradiso. Uh, I was trying to see if I could do the good, bad, and the ugly on the tin whistle. <laughs> I don't think I can, but. Just in case you can't bring that bit of music to mind. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I mean, that was a poor attempt, but just to bring it back to mind, it's genius, isn't it? I mean, not my rendition, he's composing. And there's a, a beautiful uh, theme from Cinema Paradiso, which I used to play with snake strings. And uh, I'll give you a little, just a little pinch of that. Um, I think I know it when we get the music up anyway. I haven't played it for a few years. Where is it? Where is it? There it is. Just oozes passion, that doesn't it? Such a beautiful theme. And uh, Coolio is with us. I can ditch that. It's a good job I kind of know it because um, I think my sight's going, you know. I can see the, the black blobs, but I can't really see the lines. <laughs> a trip to the. Um, Optician is in order. I changed my glasses as well. I thought these ones might be better. And so I asked Robin if we could play 
Gabriel's oboe again. I know we did it maybe seven or eight streams ago. <laughs> My life is measured in streams. Uh, so, bring Robin on, and uh, before we leave the memory of Ennio Morricone, his music was sublime, wasn't it? Have you seen that um, cinema parody? So, such a passionate, romantic, steamy film. And the music is just oh, perfect, perfect, so versatile, what a man. So let's see if Mr. Robin is, is lurking. I'm going to get the music up for this as well, not that it'll do me much good. Oh, yes, mate. Thank you, Robin. Mr. Robin Smith, the Cheltenham champion. Fantastic. Theme to, no, Gabriel Zobo, Ennio Morricone. That's from the mission, isn't it? I haven't seen the mission. What a piece of music. Whose birthday is it then? Mrs. Stewart. Oh, happy 60th. The Broccoli Queen Elaine. Oh, it's a broccoli scone party, isn't it? I've, yeah, I've got that right, haven't I? All the chat's disappeared now. I just caught the end. Oh, oh, I've thought about broccoli scones. I'm pretty hungry as well. Oh, Sunday's my busy day because we do a saxophone workshop at 11 o'clock. 
So I just realised when you lot were talking about being in the garden and all that, I've been stood here for 11 and a bit hours. Well, every now and again I run in and grab something to eat and then come back. Oh. And I noticed Sally was in the garden. Talking of broccoli, as we often do. <laughs> yeah. Very happy birthday, Mrs. Stewart. Talking of broccoli. I mean, you've all heard about my weird breakfast. And, uh, you know, quite often, even though they used to be eating this weird porridge with broccoli and various other things, I still get the old and they'd rather not look at it and could you eat it over there and all that but um, Sally she pipes up um, a few days ago she said I'm finally getting used to your weird breakfasts and uh, sort of accepting them it's progress isn't it uh, so she's been um, like a joint gardening project with June next door the world's loveliest neighbour and uh, they're completely taking out the holly hedge because it's, we never liked it anyway. And uh, then they're going to plant some, I'm not quite sure what they're going to do, but plant some low shrubs, I think. So it's great, it's like having two gardens, and June's garden is beautiful. And uh, she is the world's loveliest neighbour, and she doesn't have a computer, or the internet, or a phone. So she's unable to watch the streams, but um, sometimes if she wants a bit of music, she just come up and garden this end. Because it's not that soundproof. So I love that. And there's a lot to be said for it. I mean, I wouldn't want to give up the internet because I wouldn't be able to communicate with you guys. But she didn't have to get a lot done. Mm, food for thought. Nah. It's very hard going back, isn't it? But um, I'm not so keen on uh, Alexa and Google and... You know, if Sally wants to know what, what the weather's doing, she asks, asks her wrist. It's too weird. Too weird. <laughs> Look at all the broccoli appearing on screen. Oh, they are lovely scones. Right, does Robin have any CDs we can buy too? Yes, he does. And if you go to, let's see if you can find a link for Robin. If you type in Robin Smith Piano, he'll come up. He's a very distinguished looking gentleman on his, on his homepage. He stood by some gates, but maybe Sally will Google him and get the right link up. But yeah, he's got some beautiful solo piano CDs. Uh, what a player. And we'll bring him up north as well. And when we do, I'll tell him to fill his car with CDs. <laughs> but meanwhile, yeah. Um... Robin Smith piano. I can probably get better than that. He uses his middle initial as well. I can't remember what it is. But I'm sure Sally will be on it. Uh, I feel a little bit of Duke Ellington coming on. When you feel Duke Ellington come on, you have to give in to it. Thank you. 
in a sentimental mood, Duke Ellington. And uh, I was listening to um, a version of that the other day. I mean, there's so many beautiful versions. It was uh, Duke Ellington with John Coltrane, just the two of them. Oh, I just sat back like a Sunday stream. Oh, let it wash over me. Beautiful. Uh, okay. Robin-Smith.co.uk hmm. Robin A. Smith. I thought it was A, but I didn't trust my memory. <laughs> You'll find him. Robin, just put in Robin Smith, the best piano player in Cheltenham. That will come up. Uh, now we've got some great regulars up in uh, Easington in the northeast. The Reverend Danny and Viv, and uh, Danny was telling me it's going to be a, it was going to be a special day today. So I hope that went really well. Is his flock were allowed to return the first service in church for four months? I bet that was great to be back. And uh, I think in celebratory mood, he sent a couple of haikus, and here they come. Sweet Saturday nights. Glass in hand, snake streaming online, melting our blues away. Yeah. And then we've got a scone theme going on today. A second one is all about scones, Elaine. Scones are a true treat. Cheese, sultana, cherry or date, broccoli too much. Come on, man. Don't knock it until you tried it. Have you actually tried a gorgonzola and broccoli scone? And more to the point, have you tried one of Elaine's gorgonzola and broccoli scones? When we, when we all get together for the, for the get-together, physically, in the real world, we'll see if we can talk Elaine into uh, providing the scones. Yeah, and uh, Danny's absolutely my kind of vicar. He's the kind of vicar who loves having his church flooded with live music. For example, me. I, was, I do love churches as venues. Mm. All right, I'm going to get the little soprano back out. And... Uh, Oh, yeah, you're talking about uh, Robin's album, Le Weekend. And, yeah, he loves um, French music. And that's a beautiful, real kind of thoughtful, pastoral type CD, that one. So my buddy Jeremy Bradford, who lives in Leeds, actually lives in Otley, he's always sending me tracks. Last Sunday I did one, didn't I? What was it? The Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes one. I can't remember the title. Oh, what? oh a waste of cock. Oh, I'm not going to look at the chat anymore. It's upsetting me. No, 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 no. Sacrilege. So, and what Jeremy does, he just decides what it, what it'd be nice for me to play and does me a piano track and sends it through. So it's done me yesterday. And he did it yesterday as well. But where is it? Here it is. Okay, I haven't got long in. Got one bar. No, two bars. Okay, concentrate, Snakey. Stop thinking about scones. Concentrate on the job in hand. Can't get the first two notes right.
Thank you for that, Jeremy. Short but very sweet. Are you talking about breakfast again? That's my fault, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know the Yarak. Don't know. Turkish, maybe? I don't know it. Tell me about it. A Yarak. Oh, it's Simon Goulding coming up. So we had a new one from Simon last night, a Cuban tune, which I enjoyed a lot. El Bodiguera, the uh, shopkeeper. And uh, so we've got one, one bossa nova which he's prepped up already. He just loves the Latin sound, right? me too. But he lives and breathes, breathes it, that boy. And uh, so he did a real ambitious arrangement. Everything he does is ambitious of Girl from Ipanema. Classic Jobim tune. So... Uh, I'll have a go at that. All right, I've got to think about this. I'm going to do a bit of flute and a bit of sax on it. Get my crib notes out.
he's a good lad, that Simon Goulding, isn't he? Tune. Yeah, well spotted. Christian and Pat, that is in fact the alto flute. The big fat one. It's a good eight inches longer than the concert flute. Chunky, chunky beast. The alto flute. Loved by Bert Bacharach and whoever orchestrates Barry White, or did. So all I need to do is go, um, and everybody goes, Ooh. great instrument. You all happy? hope so. Well, oh, sax bandits are on board. Good to see you guys. Rob, I hope. Had a lot of fun with the sax bandits. Rob Digweed and his crowd of merry sax players. Yeah. And you must be relaxed by now. A little tune on the whistle. The Women of Ireland, traditional tune. Don't think it's attributed to any any writer. It's so old. That's what happens sometimes. The origins get lost in the mists of time, the Irish mist in this case. I heard the, the chieftains do it and fell in love with it. Paddy Watts his name on the whistle. Such a gorgeous sound. And you'd think, it, I mean, it's so simple, it's just a... Flipping piece of tin with some holes in. That, you know, you might think nothing can go wrong with that. The bits can't drop off it, and and got a reed or anything like that. But I don't know why I'm telling you this. But what can happen is you get like somehow you get I think this is what's it called again, the fiffle or something. You get a little bit of like an air bubble, 
stuck in there. And it can it goes squawk and it's the most horrible sound ever. So you have to you have to remember every now and again you do a quick suck instead of blowing and that clears clears your tubes. You absolutely did not need to know that. But now you do. Health Harbour. I guess that's in Ireland. I haven't been to Ireland for ages. I mean, none of us have been anywhere for ages, have we? But I love Ireland so much. Great for music, great for the crack, and such a sociable place, isn't it? So we've got a right community going, haven't we? It's really lovely, and, you know, there's the chatters and the non-chatters. And I feel you all there. And I get lovely messages, letters and emails and things, and, you know, quite often you'll say that these shows that me and Sally and Joe put on are helping you a little bit get through lockdown and keeping your spirits up. And it's so great to hear. And it really works two ways as well, because you guys, you've kept me going to, I mean, it's, especially at first, it was such a massive amount of work. I just thought, I've got to do it, I've got to do it. And do you remember, I mean, many of you do, when I was, we were doing it every night. Oh, I wasn't burnt out, but it's so worth it. Cause it just gives me purpose, you know, and enables me to keep doing my job. Cause it, that's, that is my job description on my passport. I'm a cheerer upper and a lifter of spirits. Actually, on the passport it says musician, but that's what it should say. A lifter of spirits. <laughs> a cheerer upper. I just thought of that today. I don't suppose it's such a word. Helen came up with a good word last night, but I can't remember what it was. Maybe she'll tell us if she's still there. All right. Susie, I hope you're still there and haven't gone to sleep or you know, nodded off over your guitar. And uh, my new friend Susie, she's a virtual friend. We met during lockdown, virtually, and uh, she makes beautiful music. And, uh, there's an album called Sun, Sun, Sun Lounger, which is going to be out beginning of next year and uh, this, this song is from there and it's so perfect it just says it says Sunday stream all over it's so chilled and relaxed and uh, it's an honour and a pleasure to have her on board assuming that the technology works now what do I need for this A bit of this and a bit of this, a bit of the other. And I think Susie will introduce the song. Hi, Snake. Hi, everyone. This song is called The Sun Will Rise Again.
Oh, yeah. Love that. Oh, thank you so much, Susie. You're a star. Excellent. Susie Ledge, L-E-D-G-E. Susie Ledge Music on Instagram. Same on Facebook. Find her on Twitter, Susie Ledge. And uh, like most of us artists, beaver in a way, doing our thing. You can find her on Spotify. And she's ahead of me. She's done what I should do. I've got an artist page on there, which you can search for and uh, follow her on Spotify. So those links are underneath the description as well, I think. Yes, I did that of this video. So Ah, oh, love that. What a closer, eh? Do you see what I mean? sun will rise again and it will on us guys thank you so much thank you Mr. Robin Smith thank you Mr. Simon Goulding thank you Mr. Jeremy Bradford thank you Joe even though I've got to get up really early to get you to your driving lesson tomorrow morning I can do it this would not happen without the technical know-how Mr. Joseph Davis here, and uh, Sally, of course, would not happen without her either. She makes it happen. And you guys, you guys there on the screen, you guys there out in the world, you're wonderful and really, really appreciate the time we spend together. It's marvellous. So we'll meet up next Saturday, shall we? Seven o'clock down here at the bottom of the garden and uh, good time will be had by all nobody will get hurt and uh, until then look after each other take care of yourselves go steady stay safe and uh, all the very 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 best to you Thank you for your company.